We move now to looking at ethylene and the need for alternative sources for this very important monomer for the polymer industry. In the syllabus, the students required to discuss the need for alternative sources of the compounds presently obtained from the petrochemical industry. Now this means that you need to be able to provide uh, an idea, you need to be able to discuss why we should look for alternative sources for ethylene that is used to produce polyethylene, polystyrene and polyvinyl chloride. Now at the moment, all of those three addition polymers are derived from ethylene that comes from crude oil, which is non-renewable. About 3 to 5% of the total crude oil use worldwide is dedicated to uh, the plastics industry. And the fear is, is that as crude continues to run out and demand continues to remain constant, then the price for crude will mean that plastics become prohibitively expensive as the cost is passed on to the consumer. So we really need an alternative where we could still make plastics from something other than ethylene sourced from crude oil. Now ethanol uh, can be produced from crop fermentation and we can dehydrate ethanol to ethylene. Now this means that you can use biomass or crops to produce ethanol which is a very small step away from ethylene. If you think about it, ethanol is hydrated ethylene so ethylene is dehydrated ethanol and we will examine this more closely in subsequent lessons. But there's an example of the equation for the formation of ethylene from ethanol. Ethanol on the left, if you get a sulfuric acid catalyst to dehydrate it, it's quite a strong catalyst. With a concentrate solution about 6 mole per litre, you can dehydrate ethanol to ethylene leaving water. Now, Glucose is the monomer of cellulose. If you examine glucose in the bottom left hand corner, there's what we call a chaired isomeric structure of glucose. If you use your imagination, it looks a little bit like a chair that you might find on the beach. Uh, and some scientists believe that as oil reserves run out, the, the cost of this uh, supply and demand issue will drive the petroleum industry to look elsewhere and leave all of crude to the plastics industry, but this is probably a little bit of wishful thinking. And a more tantalizing renewable source exists anyway, and that's cellulose. And we know that cellulose is formed from glucose, and if you look at that glucose molecule, it's very rich in hydrogen and carbon, very similar to the hydrocarbons that we currently get ethylene from. So if we could somehow convert glucose into ethylene, because glucose comes from plant matter, there's a renewable source for ethylene that we could then use to make the addition polymers we've studied. What we'll examine now is the condensation polymer cellulose. Remember with addition polymerization, we looked at the three previous polymers, PVC, polystyrene and polyethylene. We're just going to examine one example of a condensation polymers. Now, condensation polymerization occurs when monomers join together by eliminating a small molecule. This is usually water. Now, an easy way to remember what a condensation polymer is, is to associate condensation with water, as per the picture on your screen. This means that, differently to the addition polymerization, where nothing uh, is left off the final product, in condensation polymerization, one water molecule is ejected for every two monomers that form the polymer. So let's have a look now at cellulose. Cellulose is the polymer of glucose. When glucose monomers line up, they align some hydroxide groups next to each other so that you can uh, react eliminating a water molecule. So here's an example. There's a condensed structural formula of glucose. If you examine it, you can see that it's C6, H12 when you include the two end hydrogens, O6 when you include the end oxygens. Now if I align that with another identical glucose monomer, you can see now that the hydroxide groups are in very close proximity. These will then react via a condensation reaction, so the water molecule is ejected and a centralized bond through the oxygen atom occurs. This now represents a small segment of the cellulose polymer 
a condensation polymer of glucose. So cellulose is an example of a condensation polymer and it's the polymer that's produced when glucose monomers condense. The way that we work out how much water has been ejected or emitted is to simply add up the number of monomers that have been added together and subtract one. This makes perfect sense. If you think about the previous illustration, we'll go back there quickly now, down here we had two glucose monomers. Because they have the ability to form a water molecule, we've seen that the rule stands true here. Two minus one is one, so for every two monomers, I would produce one water molecule. Likewise, if I now brought a third one in on the right-hand side, I would eject two water molecules because the rule is three monomers minus one equals two molecules of water produced, and so forth. So a polymer of cellulose that had 300 glucose monomers, the number of water molecules that would be ejected in the process would be 300 minus one, which is 299 molecules of water for every 300 monomers of glucose used. Here's an example of this happening at a slightly greater scale. Identify there that we have four glucose monomers condensing together. The resulting chain looks a little bit like that. You can still see the leftover four parent monomers of glucose. And because there were four, the number of water molecules I would eject is four minus one equals three. Well, what about cellulose? That, what makes it so tantalizing for us when we're looking for alternatives for ethylene from crude? Remember that plants use photosynthesis in year 11 to produce glucose via the photosynthetic reaction before you. Six moles of carbon dioxide plus six moles of water gives six moles of glucose and six moles of oxygen. Sorry, one mole of glucose and six moles of oxygen. So the monomer needed for cellulose is already present in all plant matter. Now this makes perfect sense, doesn't it? The plant will produce glucose via photosynthesis and then polymerize that glucose into cellulose, which is the main structural component of nearly all plant matter. Because plants are the location for the natural polymerization of glucose to cellulose, they are therefore very rich in cellulose and we refer to plant matter as biomass. It's the bulk of that living matter found in plants and tree life. And because there's so much of that around, it's a tantalizing source for an alternative to ethylene. We must also remember too that what is crude oil? Well, crude oil is decomposed and compressed plant matter that for millions of years has been in the right environment with temperature and pressure enabling it to be condensed into an energy-rich fuel source. By going to plant matter prior to that crude oil production process over millions of years, we're skipping that step and enabling ourselves to still get the original starting point of crude, but from renewable biomass. Because if we harvest biomass and use it, via fermentation to produce ethanol and then dehydrate it to ethylene, we can simply keep planting crops that grow quickly and therefore we can continue the cycle of ethylene production. The question then for us is how do we get ethylene from cellulose? And we look at this process in great detail in subsequent lessons as we examine the two steps, fermentation and dehydration.